Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers with whatever writing ailments you might have. Whether it's related to your craft or your career, we can help. Are you ready for your session? The The doctors doctors are are in. in. Roshni, how are you doing? I am doing good, and I am so tired. Tired of what? Tired of franchises. <laughs> yes, yes. I actually um, did some traveling recently, uh, somewhat regrettably. Uh, but <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I was, you know, the one thing I like about traveling somewhat is I get to catch up on some movies on the flights because the in-air entertainment flying, I was flying from Cleveland to L.A., and back so i i you know was able to catch up on some movies i'd missed and i'm glad i missed them i guess you could say i was gonna say was it worth it or were you held hostage in your in your seat on the airplane (laughs) i tried to watch the latest uh fantastic beasts film which is what was it i can't is that number three dumbledore number three number three i think it was the it's the dumbledore whatever dumbledore secret thing and i i couldn't get into it i couldn't even finish it um and uh, and I was really curious to see how it had done. So I looked up the box office numbers and it did not do well. It was like 95 million compared to, uh, you know, the previous movies. It's like uh, 95 million domestically, 300 million internationally and 400 million globally. What was the first movie? Do you know the numbers on the first, the first one? one was double that it okay. was over double that, you know, and then the second uh-huh. one was about 50% less, you know, it kept dropping as they went. Yeah. And it's like, And we've talked about franchise fatigue before, but I mean, this is like the most graphic visual numbers of of that. And obviously these movies are a fraction of what the Harry Potter films were that came before them. That's kind of the same, you know, franchise still. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those are in the billions, obviously. Harry Potter, though, had the advantage of already having been written. Mm-hmm. people people knew where those stories were going and all they did was just translate it to the screen right. whereas whereas uh fantastic beast is a completely new thing oh it is completely different yeah and, and i think that's part of the reason is that it's not doing so well as people were familiar with harry potter the whole world they wanted to they wanted to see it on the big screen because they'd read about it and and it's also i think it's definitely more geared toward children Whereas Fantastic Beasts is definitely a little more adult story. It's it's harder to follow. It's definitely more intrigue and and you know it's it's the adults of of the magical world kind of fighting with themselves. And there really aren't any kids in it. There's but it's some also cute sort of a prequelish kind of thing because it's it, is it a happens prequel. before. Yeah. So let's let's dissect as writers because I also made you I didn't make you but you were very tardy to the party to watch Jurassic World Dominion which was oh my gosh that was two hours of my life I will never get back yes um, yes, yes. Uh, I, I only that. watched it because I only because watched I told it because, you to. because you told me to but also because there was a a special deal for the Peacock streamer oh, it okay was, it, it had come out on streaming and and I got like a really good deal on that so I, I figured okay fine I'll watch it finally yeah, I watched it in 4D, and I gotta say, that's the only thing that made it worth it was like the 4D part. I can't imagine that making it worth it. I mean, I mean, it was it was fun. It was fun. Like every time, like there was a hit or like the dinosaur would come running, like it would like the the chair would jar, and I was like, oh, like maybe it's like getting a back massage or something, you know? Like I was like, oh, oh this is fun. But um, point, yeah. Yeah, that was no, my it, positive it, on it. it. I I just want to say it was kind of the laziest writing I've ever seen. It's it's like everything was so convenient and, you know, you're on in a giant island and all these people just wind up in the same place magically. It It's just there's too much um, coincidence. Yeah. Coincidence. Yeah. I, I love the fact that like people would meet each other and they're like, oh, you're Owen so and so. I've heard about you. I can trust you. You know, and you're uh, like, that's not how life works. What are I you read doing? Your book. I read your book. I can trust yeah. you. Like, oh, God. Jeez, guys. Mm-hmm. But OK, so this is a great example, though, of like, because I think this is kind of what we're all feeling with franchises that they're trying to reboot, such as Star Wars, such as Jurassic Park, such as Harry, uh, I mean, it's not the Harry Matrix. Potter, but it's in the Harry Potter world, the Matrix. I don't know if they're like, here's the one thing. If you are going to fran- like continue with a franchise, 
respect the history of the freaking franchise, okay? Like, what I did not like about Dominion right off the bat, you ended Fallen Kingdom with dinosaurs are in the world. That is the only premise you need. Dinosaurs in the modern world. That's the only premise you need for the next movie. And instead they're like, well, it's cool that dinosaurs are here and that I'm like riding on my scooter and like a T-Rex comes out and eats me. We're totally fine with that. But hey, did you hear about these locusts? And you're like, yeah. what? You know, and then they're like, OK, I-, I don't know if you thought about this, but they're like, in five years, dinosaurs have spread across the world. I'm like, maybe in five years they spread across the Americas. But did you put them on a boat and take them to Asia? Oh, you did. OK. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. that's how they spread because we put them on like freaking planes and stuff and like spread them to other countries. But like, naturally, they wouldn't have spread in five years. Was that Ron DeSantis? Did he do that? (laughs) I I know. Right. But like, why wouldn't you just contain them and keep them in the Americas, you know, keep them in the U.S. as much as you can? You're like, oh, no, it's fine. We'll just take them to, to the Middle East and let them procreate. It's cool. We're cool with that. I, I was just confused. What? Like, where where did they all come from? It's like there's there were like a a, a few dozen dinosaurs at that that house mm-hmm. in in the second in the one. second one, yeah. And, it's and then like, they suddenly did they multiply. just have a big orgy, and there were like all these dinosaurs all like thousands of dinosaurs suddenly. Like I don't know, maybe the birds flew over to Asia, and then when they plopped their eggs, it somehow ended up as a T Rex. Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there is something to be said for ducks. And geese, when they land in a pond, they pick up fish eggs and then they fly somewhere else and they land in another pond and they deposit the fish eggs. I mean, that's kind of a something I learned uh-huh. from, I don't know, camp or something when I was a kid. So, yeah, yeah. So there is something to transplanting like eggs of certain animals. So maybe there's a slim chance that could happen. But, but... would it have happened in five years? That's a very yeah. short window for like evolution. For them to be everywhere in the yeah. world, right? I mean, all I can assume is that people were like, "Cool, I'm going to take my Triceratops with me to Russia or something, and like deposit them here." I think because people were a little too cool about it, actually. Yeah, people were super cool about that. Was the thing? I'm like, you have a great setup from the second movie, and you completely disregarded it, and you just ignored the franchise history, you know? Mm-hmm. Because for what? Like shock? Like like what I told you? I think off podcast before you ever watched it i was like if it wasn't connected to jurassic park and jurassic world the story would have been fine i would have been cool with the locusts but you had history there and you did not respect it and i think that's the issue with a lot of these franchises i haven't seen matrix i know people didn't really like it but like you know it's kind of the same thing like with the the new uh fantastic beast that you did watch i only saw the second i i'm I'm done with the series but respect the history you have established canon you mm-hmm. know that's why people got mad at star wars you disrespected you disrespected the history there was there were books out there there were series out there and you were just like whatever you know i believe in the in the books uh luke had a kid i believe he got married and had a kid um and i think the the canon if i remember right it was just they were cleaning up the remnants of the empire you could have mm-hmm. done stuff with that instead you just i don't even know what you did you, and you're you like, re, well, they remade the, the original trilogy again is what they did, you know. So Well, just, yes, there's that. But yeah, they just re- they just changed the names of the characters, made a bigger Death Star and started over. Again, respect the history. You think that the bad guys would be like, we've tried this Death Star two times already. It didn't work. Third time's the charm. No, come on. Yeah, the know? next one, the Death Star will be the size of a galaxy. <laughs> I know, right? This Death Star thing has got to work, okay? We paid a lot for these blueprints. It's they're, gotta they're doubling, work. They're doubling down on the Death Star. I know, right? Or all in. Down. All in. All my chips are on this Death Star. Quadruple we'll, down we'll on fix this it. Death Star. And it, and it always has the same flaw, too. It's like, come on, guys. You know? oh my gosh but that's what i'm saying it's like respect the history like come on it's Mm -hmm. stupid and it makes viewers feel like they're stupid you know one of the great things about the original jurassic park movie was as ridiculous as the science was they had some sort of plausibility that you know they tried to make it seem like this is something we could really do and then in this Mm -hmm. this latest film they just went off the rails and asked you to believe almost everything is possible and un, you know, completely giving no causality for anything that's happening, except for we need this to happen now for the plot. It was yeah. literally everything was super plot driven. 
and it had no real, it had no meaning and it had no purpose other than hurting the cast to the right place to be at the right place at the right time. And suddenly dinosaurs are our friends. Like we like dinosaurs. Right. Like dinosaurs I don't, I people. don't know. I, I mean, like a, if I saw like a, you know, 15 foot lizard with really big teeth, I don't care. It ain't my friend. I'm running away. I'm hiding. I'm shooting that thing. It's not my friend. Yeah. You know, and, I mean, I just go back to the very basics. I mean, you learn this in grade school that dinosaurs were cold blooded, that reptiles are cold blooded and they would not live in the mountains, in the snow, because they would not have any energy to move around. They'd just be frozen all the time. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think about. So then sci- based on the science, would they have been able to survive in modern day North America? I and especially know. with our climate becoming hotter. Yeah. Maybe. Well, hotter. Well, they were they were living in a colder climate in the movie, but they would be fine in our and they would love our, our, warmer, our warmer climate. Okay. Yeah. If they just their couldn't era go was north. actually very, very warm compared to, to now, actually. OK, so they just couldn't go north. They would they yeah, would like yeah. our they would like where we are, but they couldn't mm-hmm. really like live in Canada or something. <laughs> Nothing I'm against saying, Canada. We're, we're, no, Canada's. <laughs> I mean, it's got socialized health care. They would love it there. I'm just saying they can't survive in Canada. Yeah. You know, Dinosaurs Justin Trudeau's blood, like, we're yeah. turning you away at the border. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I, for me, I think the thing that made me upset was just the disrespect of the history right off the bat. Let alone the coincidences and the contrivances and the whatever, whatever. You know, but the, right off the bat, I feel like for any franchise you got to pay attention, you know? I mean, right now I'm, you know, writing for a series that has a lot of history and I don't even know, like I'm still learning all the history in the series. You got to respect it. You can't just be like, and I've gotten notes to that effect where it's like, "Mm, I don't think they would do that. And I'm like, oh yeah, because I don't know the history. (laughs) I'm still learning Mm -hmm. it, you know? So you got to, yeah, you got to, you got to respect that for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. The other, the other one that I wanted to mention was the Matrix, the new one. I can't remember what it was called. Is it the uh, Resurrection? I think the I, Matrix. Resurrection. I don't know. I didn't see it. The, I know the name people is didn't appropriate. like it. Yeah. Spoiler alert. The the name is appropriate because they basically resurrected the original characters that had died. Mm-hmm. You know, in order to tell the same story again. You know, it's this. It's this. Okay. You know, we've got instead of Luke, we've got Ray. Instead of you know. It's it's another orphan in the desert, you know, learning about their their history and becoming the hero. You know, it's the same thing with with um, Trinity. Oh, that's and Star Neo. Wars. Okay. Yeah, but I'm saying like, hey, it's the same thing with the Matrix. Okay. They put they put Trinity and Neo back in in the world somehow and had them, tr- you know, eventually learn what's going on. It's it's just redoing the original Matrix movie. It's like why couldn't you tell an original story moving forward from there? You know, there's they did a yeah. ton of different stories because they had the whole Animatrix series with all those short films, which are really cool. You've established your 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 basis for this, and you're going to move forward. Then move forward. Don't keep going back. You know, I don't. I, that's the thing. It's like you want to you want to like you're just trying to bank on Keanu Reeves and and you know uh, Carrie Ann Moss again. It's or is it? Is it really about telling a new story and continuing it forward? I mean, I think the hero can have a new journey. That's yeah. life, right? I mean, I, I don't know if it's just, is it lazy writing? Is it they don't have, like, a, like if are they under a major time crunch? You know, like, I don't I don't know. They're like, oh, let's do a sequel. Okay, quick, write something. All right, let's just re reuse what we had before. Like, I don't know. I don't know why they don't want to come up with completely new stuff. I don't think it's a time crunch. I mean, they spent, they, they took plenty of years to make this movie. So it wasn't like they were in a rush. Mm-hmm. If you're going to um, base your story on what you've done before, try to come up with something original. Like the original matrix movies were pretty, I thought they were pretty solid as far as, you know, beginning, middle and end. Mm-hmm. But if you, if you take that end and you keep extending it forever, it, it, it diminishes what came before what you had before yeah yeah for sure if you if you build on it great but if you if you if you repeat it or you ex- kind of just extend it you're, you're not really telling a new story you're just extending the story you had before so you're not starting with you know in the beginning you're starting with okay this is what happened before and we're just going to keep going from there 
Mm-hmm. And they, I don't mm-hmm. think they really explained how they did it either very well. Yeah. And at least be logical because this is why I'm so like, I refuse to watch it. And I've, I've heard mixed from friends, but I refuse to watch Hocus Pocus 2 because spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen the first one, the witches clearly die in the end of the first one. They clearly, clearly die. They are gone. So you're telling me that they weren't gone? They didn't right. blow up in front of our eyes? Did somebody, like, stitch them together from, like, nothingness? Like, come freaking on. And from mm-hmm. what I understand from what people have told me, that the movie doesn't even address the fact that they blew up. Blew up. <laughs> How do you come back from that? You know? I don't know. We just light another unless candle. You're a T1, unless you're a T-1000 where you can uh, bring all your little globs of metal back together. Right? Yeah. Right. But, I mean, to me, that that makes me upset. Because at least at least respect the history. I think that's yeah. why I'm upset with franchise and franchise revivals in general right now is because really like 9.5 not times out of 10, they do not respect the history at all. Yeah. It's going to be interesting because there's two TV pilots um, that are coming out that um, I'm interested in. Um, I'm a, was a big fan of supernatural, the CW series. And now they that have was a, still going. No, it, it finally ended after 10, 11 seasons. When did it end? Just a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, this year they're coming out with something called the Winchesters, which is the parents of the, the main characters of the Supernatural series. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a flashback, you know, prequel kind of story. So again, doing that instead of telling... A, they, tried, they tried to do spinoff series from Supernatural twice already, and both failed miserably. So they, they actually had episodes on Supernatural with these other characters that they were going to try to spin off another series, and they, neither of them worked very well. So now they're trying the other thing. Instead of trying going forward, they're going back. And then yeah. the other show, which I've watched the pilot of, which is Quantum Leap. And I was a big fan of that show back in the 80s and 90s when it was Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell. You, do you know the show? I remember it, but I never watched it. It's, it's a I time travel it. show. Yeah, being on. And I don't know if this one I'm just more nostalgic about, but I, I actually love the pilot of this one because it's going forward with new characters. So they based oh, okay. it on it's it's in the future. Th- it's 35 years after the original program closed down. They had this program where Sam Beckett wanted to travel in time and he got stuck bouncing around time helping people. Okay. And he never he never came home. The, the, they left it open ended at the end of the season uh, series. Mm hmm. So now here the government has funded this program to restart. And this uh, Ben Song, uh, an Asian American actor, um, plays the genius programmer who has supposedly fixed the system. And now they're going to try it again. He gets stuck in time. So it's, it's the same premise, which worked really well, but a whole new cast. And it's a very nice, diverse cast. And, uh, and I love the pilot. I thought it was fantastic. But you know, the great thing about Quantum Leap is it's an anthology series, technically, because every it's a procedural anthology where every episode, it's a different time period with different characters. You have your mm-hmm. main characters always trying to solve whatever the problem is and save the person involved or change time for the better or whatever it is. But they're all unique stories. And it's a great storytelling, you know, uh, machine where you can come up with all these different social issues and stories and tell them it's fantastic. And it's it's uh, it's nostalgic, but it's it's new as well. But you know what's interesting about your description of that? You know why it works as a reboot? Tell me. Do you know? <laughs> do you know why? Because it's a procedural. You mm. said it yourself. Everything is like self-contained, right? So there might mm-hmm. be story arcs with with Ben and maybe a couple of supporting characters, but you can just kind of jump in and jump out and not have to like. Like mm-hmm. kind of like Doctor Who, right? Doctor Who, I believe, is a little. Well, I don't know if it's super procedural, but you don't have to have like watched like no. the twenty years of the previous Doctor Who to understand the current season. So, because it's procedural and it doesn't have that connection to the old story, you can reboot it and it works. I mean, what would be interesting too if it was a, if it was a serialized story is if like Ben was like, "Cool, we fixed it," and he goes back in time to find the other guy because sending him back in time forever has screwed with the current you know, space-time mm-hmm. continuum, and then he gets stuck in time trying to find this guy. That would be interesting, too. 
that would be more of a serialized story. But if they're yeah. rebooting it straight, like one for one with the original show, it works because it's procedural. That's why yeah. things like CSI can have a bazillion offshoots or like law and order or like, you know, mm -hmm. criminal minds or whatever, because they don't rely on that. You, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. The storytelling is different. A, there's a couple small differences between the old series and the new series, which I think help in the modern way we consume uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. The the diverse cast, they each are, are pretty solid, good characters that have their own little arcs going on that are going to be longer arcs, just mm -hmm. like like the, the team on CSI have their own long arcs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so those characters, yeah, those characters are going to bring something new to the show, and and have that longer arc. But you're right; every episode is going to be able to be its own independent, um, you know, mystery of the week kind of thing. I feel like I've like discovered something now. Like, send this to the Hollywood execs. This is why certain things can reboot and certain things cannot. Yes. Procedural, yes. Serialized, think twice or continue the story well. They also waited a long time to do it. I mean, it wasn't like it ended last year, like, the you know, with the Winchesters. It just ended a couple of years ago, and they're coming in with something new already. This is, you know, something that's, yeah. I don't want to say it's been, you know, eagerly anticipated. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole new generation. But, I yeah. mean, yeah, like, I mean, it's true, though. With a procedural, you just don't have to. I mean, if they, it's like if they rebooted Twilight Zone or something. You can do that because it doesn't rely on a history. There mm -hmm. is no history. Do you, right. do you see what I'm saying? There might mm -hmm. be history. They, like they might refer to the first Leaper guy. You know, they might refer to like the original experiments. There are, but there you are really, connections. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't necessarily need to have that canon and that history to make it work because the show was not designed that way. Mm -hmm. The story was not designed that way. Yeah. But anything else, like all these movie franchises we talk about, you know, those have history and they matter to the stories of the characters mm -hmm. and they should inform what's happening in the future, yeah. you know, but they don't. I think that that I said the word anticipation, like this was, you know, something that hadn't happened and had been talked about for a long time and it was anticipated, which I think makes it, you know, people are more excited about it. I think that's what's missing in a lot of um, what's going on in entertainment in general is that. We're getting so bombarded with content. We don't have time to miss anything or long for anything. They just keep throwing it at mm -hmm. us. So we've talked yeah. about the Marvel stuff a lot and a lot of these franchises that if we don't get a break, we can't be nostalgic to want it. You know, we, we can't be nostalgic enough to really look forward to it. Plus, it doesn't give them enough time to come up with a good story. Like they're like, OK, we got to do the next one. Got to do the next one. Kick it out. You know, keep cranking mm -hmm. it out. And I think that's, you know, what happened with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the, the spinoffs that have happened and some of these things that they just don't catch because it's like, we're just going to try to like latch one right onto the next one, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Doesn't well, I mean, they work. kind of like we've talked about this before. The industry's sort of done it to themselves, like <laughs> back in my day. But like, remember, for example, you know, Titanic made such a killing in the box office. Why? It stayed in the theater for six months. They didn't replace it with anything. They didn't shuffle it out. There are movies that I'm like, oh, I wanted to see that. And it's gone already. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to see the remake of um, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. That came out in the summer. And like, I'm one of those, I don't necessarily have to go the opening weekend. So I'm like, okay, I'll wait like three or four weeks when it dies down and I'll go when it's quieter. By that point, it had left AMC and Regal and it had, it had gone to Lemley, which is like a independent theater yeah. house. It had already left three, four weeks later. I'm like, what happened? Because now, honestly, all you have to do is just wait it out. Six weeks, it's on DVD. Cool. I just saved myself <laughs> like, you know, five, ten bucks. You know what I'm saying, though? Because but the theaters did it like not even the theaters, but the industry did it to themselves by rushing things out so quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, like, OK, four weeks on this now to the next film. You did it to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, if you could have a Titanic that made a couple billion dollars, you know, do that a couple times a year. You'd be doing great instead of trying to crank out all these, you know, um, so many films that, you know, don't do, you know, don't even make back their marketing budgets. And you have no incentive. You're like, OK, great. You put it in the theater. It's going to go on Disney Plus or, you know, Hulu Plus or whatever Plus in like four weeks. Cool. I'll mm -hmm. wait. 
again, that's what I'm saying. If I knew I couldn't see that movie for like another six months because it, you know, like back when we were little and like it would take forever to come out on, you know, DVD or whatever, then you're going to go see it. You're going to plunk the money. You're going to take the time because you know you're going to miss it. But if you know you can catch it, it's like, who cares? I'll get it when when I get it. You know, I talk, we talk about the fa- the fatigue in the fr- in the Marvel universe, but I feel like um, you know, there a lot of the stuff is having that problem. But like uh, Wakanda Forever is coming out soon. I feel like the, that one because it stands so uniquely apart from the rest of the the universe it is kind of has its and plus it's also the first one after Chadwick Boseman passed away. Yeah. I, that one has its own kind of anticipation. I think people are really interested in seeing that. So that one might be that might buck the trend. Hopefully. Plus, I think Black Panther came out 2018 or 2019, or was it even earlier? It's um, been a long time. It's been a while. It was definitely before the 2018. Pandemic. Yeah, it was 2018. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a it's been a good chunk of time, you know. Mm-hmm. Right, to, to and, and because the that universe, that part of the Marvel universe, is kind of separate from the rest of it. That's all connected. You know, all the other characters are also connected. Um, mm-hmm. It feels like it feels like it's it doesn't have the same baggage that it's dragging along with it with all the other, you know, um, shows and, and films. So looking forward to that. When is that one coming out? I think it's in uh, is it in November? I think it's in November. OK, sometimes around now, I'll be around, around now yeah. when this is going to this is when it's going to air. Yeah, we might have to do is another it... episode on it. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's funny, like. And it might be because I'm in Los Angeles. So this is kind of unrelated. But uh, in Michigan, billboards, and I'm sure it's the same where you're at in Ohio, billboards show like the rest stop coming up. Here's, you know, where you can eat or, you know, whatever. I think now maybe this trend has kind of moved to the Midwest. But when I first moved out here, I was like, oh, my gosh, like there's so all the billboards are movies. Right. Mm. You know, you you probably I would say maybe you get what? 50 50 maybe 70 30 right ratio of like other ads to billboards yeah. being movies where ours is like pretty much 90 to 100 yeah. percent so sometimes i see so many ads for shows and movies around here that my brain automatically thinks they're already airing mm, because they yeah. come in and out so quickly so mm-hmm. like i'm just like oh okay i see that show and then i'm like oh what you mean it hasn't come out yet and i assume it's already been out because they they cycle through them so fast like those mm. those ads, even just outside my my house, constantly change. And I'm like, oh, wow, it's another movie. So I just assume it's already come and gone. Um, yeah. So it kind of tricks my brain a little bit. It, it would, yeah. Yeah. Marvel has just cranked it up so fast that it's it's uh, blurry, you know, going from one to the next. Part of that fa- franchise fatigue is also the fact that they write the movies so connected that you finish one and you don't feel like it's ended because you know, it's leading into something else, whether it's the next movie of that hero or a different hero, you know, even the, um, she Hulk TV series has things that are connected into the Marvel cinematic universe as well. It's not like you get definitive endings ever. Yeah. Yeah. I would be so nice. Satisfying ending is what I want. Right. I would be so curious. We should we should do this sometime as an experiment, like for a month. Write down like what you see on the billboards and what movies, because I bet you anything you probably only get the ads for like the big, the big, big, big tentpole movies like a Marvel movie, whereas I might see more obscure stuff. On I my honestly can't even remember the last time I saw a billboard that had a movie on it here. It's always something uh, really? silly like, you know, car dealerships and, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. The hospitals and stuff. It's really, I I can't even think of, I, I haven't been in downtown Cleveland in a long time though. And I live out in the So maybe, out the suburbs, maybe out so there. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even think there are any billboards like within five miles of me. Which is hilarious because seriously, all the billboards around me, like on the, on the bus stop was like, last was Bridgerton. And I think mm-hmm. now it's, uh, what's that one? Um, I was going to say Armageddon, Amsterdam. Amsterdam Mm -hmm. there they have posters for Amsterdam I just saw one recently that billboard went out it was like a it was like a not a faith-based movie but it was like a kind of a spoof on a faith-based movie 
it was like Lord help us or something. Oh, I remember okay. what it looked like. It was like these people like sitting on a throne and it was like it was quippy. It was something something religious related. But now that move that's changed to another movie. Um, but yeah, like out here they cycle so fast. That's why I'm like, oh, did that show happen? Did that movie go? Okay, you know. But that's all we see. I very yeah. rarely I think I once saw a Marie Callender's poster that's like, Arrow, <laughs> here's here's where it is, you know. But very it's all movies out here. Whereas you get other stuff, car dealerships and food yeah. and whatnot. You know, yeah. I don't get that out McDonald's here. McDonald's and whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would just be super curious. I would be so curious to know how many movie billboards you see and what they are. Cause you probably only get the really, really big ones. All right. Anyway. Well, I'm fatigued from talking <laughs> about franchise fatigue. I know. Right. <laughs> Go watch an indie film. <laughs> yes. Do, do everyone a favor. Watch an indie. So what do you guys think about franchise fatigue? Let us know. You can find us online on Twitter and Instagram at WG therapy online at writersgrouptherapy.com. Let us know. What are your thoughts and what is your favorite franchise and which franchise do you wish that they would retire already and we will talk to you soon <laughs> <laughs>